Good morning and welcome everyone. I am Jatin Verma. So guys, here is the daily news analysis for 14th of November 2019. So UPSC के context में हम important जो news articles हैं उन्हें study करेंगे. सबसे पहले, which of the following is not a likely consequence when a party is called upon by the governor to form the government? So previous year prelims questions हैं ये related to the topic which has appeared in the newspaper today. So you have to answer this question in the comment section. Now, this is the solution also, right? Now, coming to the second question, consider the following statements. Declaration of assets by a judge is a mandatory act towards transparency. Now, the answer is mandatory because yesterday, Supreme Court has given the judgment. According to that judgment, it is mandatory now for the judge to declare his assets. And these assets would now be uploaded on the registry or the website of the Supreme Court, RTI Act extends to whole of India except the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Which of the above mentioned statements is or are correct? So, just answer this. Now, coming here to important news articles for today. Office of Chief Justice of India comes under RTI Act. For these news articles are relevant for GS Mains Paper 2. Ruling on CJI's office sets RTI example for political parties as well and for other organizations, NGOs, etc. Then, ye news hai 2017 ka carry forward hai. Supreme Court strikes down the rules on tribunal postings. Now, Collegium is a victim of its own birth pangs, says the judge. So, these two, three articles are related to judiciary. Page number 12, then this, all, this one deals with the power of the parliament to amend the rules for governing the tribunals. So this is again related to judiciary only. Now coming here, they save the people from cyclones, but who is saving the Sundarbans? Mangroves. So we will study the mangroves briefly. This is for GS Mains Paper 3, Environment and Ecology. Now starting with it, first of all the editorials, this editorial talks about the judgment of the Supreme Court on Karnataka Legislative Assembly uh, MLAs. MLAs, their, their uh, resignations, uh, the speaker had said that the resignation, that though the resignation does not overpower disqualification, the speaker's hands are tied as he cannot sit on the resignation letter indefinitely. Okay, so resignation does not overpower disqualification. So, Supreme Court has disqualified the Karnataka Legislative Assembly MLAs for not attending the session of legislative assembly when the flow test was to be conducted so we will do the threadbare analysis of this article now this article uh, assesses india's situation with respect to kashmir's 100 days after abrogation of article 370 in this light india's record and image as a democracy is currently on trial as much within the country as in the court of the world opinion now, this article explains the recent data on National Statistical Office reaffirms the reality of our economic slowdown. So, economic slowdown ka hum yaha se is pe analysis karenge quickly aage chalte hai. First of all, India Justice Report released in September 2019 shows that Tamil Nadu judiciary improved its operational capacities more than other states between financial year 2019 and 2017. The table lists the court across the courts across 23 states on key metrics such as infrastructure, budgets, case clearance, and human resources. All the data are for the period 2012 to 2013. So Tamil Nadu top pay indicators mein cases pending per high court. So Tamil Nadu mein minus 5.6 cases pending uh, per subordinate court. So here minus 6.1. Likewise. Sabhi states ka ye data hai pe. The data, the report was published by Tata Trust and uh, this designed by how, how India Lives. Okay, so this is another NGO. Now, Supreme Court upholds the disqualification of 17 Karnataka MLAs by the Speaker. Now, Supreme Court ne ye kaha hai ki MLAs ne jo hai resignation uh, kiya, diya tha, lekin jab tak unka resignation Speaker ne accept nahi kiya aur tab tak unke upar party whip apply ho raha tha. Party whip was applicable on the MLAs until the resignation was not accepted. Speaker did not accept the resignation of MLAs. So MLAs said that they are, as their resignation was pending, 
so mlas did not attend the house even after janta dal secular and the other political party congress whose mlas had resigned these political parties had issued a whip political party ne whip issue kiya tha ki aapko house attend karna padega jab leader of the house chune jane ki baat ho rahi thi floor test ki baat ho rahi thi lekin uske bawajood bhi whip test hone ke baad bhi whip issue karne ke baad bhi mlas jo congress ke mlas the jinhone resign kiya tha unhone whip ka whip ko obey nahi kiya to isi ke chalte unhe रिजाइन के बदले पहले उनको रिजाइन नहीं करा उनको डिस्कालीफाई कर दिया अब एक बड़ा क्वेश्चन ये उठता है कि अगर कोई डिस्कालीफाइड है एमएलए एंटी डिफेक्शन लॉ के अंडर तो क्या वो एमएलए दोबारा से इलेक्शन कॉन्टेस्ट कर सकता है कैन एन एमएलए हु इज डिस्कालीफाइड कैन दैट एम एल एक्सेप्ट कैन एन एम एल ए री कॉन्टेस्ट दी इलेक्शन कैन दैट एम एल ए हु इज रिजाइनिंग कैन ही री कॉन्टेस्ट दी इलेक्शन सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज सेड येस ही कैन neither under the constitution nor under the statutory scheme supreme court said it is contemplated the uh, that the disqualification under 10th schedule would operate as a bar from contesting the elections yani ki agar if i am an mla tomorrow and if i disobey the anti defection law if i am disqualified under anti defection law for not obeying my political party then also after being disqualified i can contest the by election to fill the vacancy that has arisen because of my resignation even if i am spreading instability even if i am the indisciplined member of my political party if i am disqualified then also i am eligible to contest the polls this means that if somebody in upsc's analogy if somebody is disqualified from upsc he can rewrite the exam so disqualification under anti defection law is because of disciplinary reasons now in the times when resignation as a form of rebel is increasingly being resorted by mlas don't you think that disqualification should be uh, incorporated as a kind of uh, resignation should be incorporated as a kind of rebellion against the party right the court said section 36 of the representation of peoples act does not contemplate such disqualification right on the provisions introduced in the 91st constitutional amendment act the judgment said that they were brought in specifically to ensure that a that an mla disqualified for def defection was not appointed as a government minister or to any remunerative post from the date of his disqualification either till the expiry of his term of office or till he was reelected to the लेजिस्लेचर विच एवर इज अर्लियर यानी कि अगर एक एम एल ए जो डिस्कालीफाइड है अगर वो दोबारा इलेक्शन कॉन्टेस्ट कर लेता है तो ही इज ही विल बी एंटाइटल्ड एज अ काइंड ऑफ ही विल बी टेकन एज अ काइंड ऑफ मेंबर ऑफ लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली एंड देर इज नो बार ऑन हिज कैपेसिटी दैट मीन्स इफ अगर आई एम गेटिंग मनी टू स्विच दी पार्टी फ्रॉम वन पार्टी टू एन अदर इफ आई एम गेटिंग मनी फ्रॉम पार्टी ए टू ज्वाइन पार्टी बी okay or to join party a and i am leaving my party my own party b so my party a my party b i am resigning and i am moving towards a a has given me 10 crore rupees and after resigning i will spend 5 crore rupees on contesting elections and another 5 crore rupees will be my saving in the process who is suffering it is the people who have elected such an mla so my point is if an mla is resigning on illogical grounds is resigning on grounds other than health grounds etc or if he is resigning on the grounds like uh, grounds which are not conscientious so then that mla should not be allowed to contest polls at least 5 years after resignation if he is suffering from health problem etc he should be given a complete less rest of 5 years if he is switching sides after resigning from congress if he is contesting the elections from bjp is it not a kind of defection yes right so this is the point here the moot question now is that should an mla who is resigning mid term be allowed to contest the polls again if there was no valid ground like health for the resignation 
Now, while Supreme Court judgment came as a boost to BJP, Congress has sought the dismissal of uh, Yadiyurappa government, the BJP government in Karnataka because these 16 MLAs have been disqualified. The Supreme Court also added to the confusion to some extent. This is just a uh, just a viewpoint. Supreme Court has added to the confusion here because Supreme Court had said that even if the resignation is not accepted, then also you can carry forward the uh, flow test for the Chief Minister, right? So this was there. Now, with reference to 10th schedule, the previous year prelims question, this is the question. Uh, the law applies to both parliament and state assemblies. It lays down the process by which legislature may be disqualified. So please answer this question in the comment section. We are incorporating all the previous year questions at relevant places. Now it is up to you. Abhi aapki duty banti hai ki aap hai attempt karein. Office of Chief Justice of India comes under RTI Act. A five judge constitution bench led by CJI declared that the office of CJI is a public authority under the RTI Act. The main judgment of the constitution bench said that Supreme Court is a public authority and the office of CJI is a part of Supreme Court and that's why office of CJI also public all the public authorities are under RTI. So office of CJI by the reason that Supreme Court is a public authority, the office of CJI is also a public authority. And if it is a public authority, then RTI Act 2005 is applicable to all the public authorities. So Justice Khanna, who shared his judgment with CJI Gogoe and Justice Deepak Gupta, observed that transparency and accountability should go hand in hand. Justice D.Y. Ch Chandrachur, in his separate and conquering opinion, eloquently observed that judicial independence is not secured by secrecy of cloistered halls. Judicial independence cannot be secured by secrecy or by installing CCTV cameras. That is a kind of pseudo transparency that you are bringing about. Now, the bench, however, agreed that the right to know under RTI was not absolute right to know of a citizen ought to be balanced with the right of right to privacy of individual judges. Certain non-exhaustive factors were listed for public information officer to consider while deciding whether the inf information sought was private or not. These factors include various criteria from the nature of the information sought to this impact to its impact on the private life of the judge. So, Question is, public authority under the RTI Act 2005 constitutes any authority or body or institution of self-government established or constituted by which of the following? A. By or under the constitution, by any other law made by the parliament or state legislature, by notification issued or made by the appropriate government. So, this is the meaning of it. Now, coming here, ruling on CGI's office sets RTI example. Right to information activists welcomed the Supreme Court judgment declaring the office of CGI as a public authority and said that the Supreme Court's decision would now serve as, a, as an example or as a precedent to help usher in, the, usher in more transparency, especially on the part of its institutions that had hitherto been reluctant to comply with the act. The entire case stems from an RTI applicant's original RTI application seeking information on the complete correspondence between the collegium and the government on certain judicial appointments as well as he had sought the correspondence between the Madras High Court judge and the CJI regarding the allegations of corruption. Now this is a, this is a good example for the political parties to follow. Political parties should allow RTI to be applied to them as well. So this judgment of Supreme Court is going to have a far reaching implications by setting an example for other bodies which resist the application of RTI to themselves. The most well known holdouts are the political parties. Political parties despite the fact that we have seen in this case that political parties are controlling the MLAs and MPs as to how these MLAs and MPs are going to vote but these political parties are not under RTI. So here is a public authority, political party 
which is controlling the the greatest institutions of our country called legislatures lok sabha and rajya sabha but since they are guiding the uh, voting behavior of all the mlas and mps why shouldn't they be under rti act we will analyze this topic some other day provided the context warrants okay but a number of schools trusts and public private partnerships have also resisted categorization of categorization as public authority under the rti act including delhi's power distribution companies and dairy major mother dairy mother dairy says that it is not under rti so mother dairy is resisting then tata power reliance power how they are increasing their power tariffs we are not clear about that okay but they see can increase in the power tariff unit that they charge from the government the most significant aspect of the judgment was the court's acknowledgement that transparency and accountability go hand in hand and that transparency need not lead to any compromise in judicial independence so the office of cji has put itself under scrutiny in practical terms this means that citizens can file rti applications to the supreme court and the chief public information officer of the court cannot deny information saying it is held by cji's office right now this is a very important news we know through the constitution or through the books like m lakshmikant etc that money bill should deal with only the financial matters the money matters but the finance act of 2017 finance act of 2017 was used by the government to make some changes to the laws related to tribunals the making changes to the appointment conditions of tribunals is not something which is to be done by a money bill right so this case was uh, filed in the supreme court by the former law minister that how can you uh, former uh, environment minister jairam ramesh that how can you uh, bring about the changes to an ordinary law through money bill a constitution bench of the supreme court has now struck down in entirety the rules framed by the government under finance act of 2017 these rules were to alter the appointments of 19 key tribunals including central administrative tribunal so these tribunals are quasi judicial bodies these are like courts only so majority of the cases that are pending before the courts or tribunals these uh, uh, semi uh, judicial bodies or quasi judicial bodies are by the government are against the government so government is government was trying to appoint change the appointment conditions of these 19 key judicial tribunals now the supreme court bench has held that the tribunal appellate tribunal and other authorities uh, this rules 2017 suffered from various infirmities first one the rules formulated by the central government under section 184 of the finance act which is a money bill being contrary to the parent enactment and the principles and we says in the constitution as interpreted by the supreme court are hereby struck down in entirety the supreme court uh, cji re referred to the larger bench the issue and questions whether the 2017 act could have been passed by passed as a money bill other question to be decided is whether the lok sabha speaker acted in the right by certifying it as a money bill so the challenge to the power of the speaker of lok sabha is also there for now supreme court has struck it down okay now coming here one of the petitioners before the supreme court said that the passing of finance act 2017 as a money bill was deliberately done to extend executive control over these institutions tribunals by altering the composition of the selection committees and vastly downgrading the qualifications required to staff these bodies another reason for referring the money bill question to seven judge bench was the court's dissatisfaction with the way the aadhar judgment in k putta swami case has dealt with the issue of what could be certified as a money bill so to your for your knowledge aadhar bill was also brought about as a money bill the constitution bench said that the putta swami verdict in aadhar case was not comprehensive enough to be set as a precedent so previously a questions 2019 ka ye question hai 
the cat which was established for redressal of grievances and complaints by or against central government employees nowadays is exercising its powers as an independent judicial authority to aadhar bill ko bhi money bill ke way milaya gaya money bill ki definition de rakhi hai article 110 ke according money bill is that bill which purely deals with money matters lekin sarkar money bill ka rasta leke kyunki us samay kya tha at that time lok sabha mein to bjp ki majority thi lekin rajya sabha mein majority nahi thi ab hum ye jante hain ki agar kisi bill ko money bill keh diya jata hai to wo bill लोकसभा में अगर पास हो गया तो राज्यसभा उसे ज्यादा दिन डिले नहीं कर सकती राज्यसभा को वो बिल पास करना होगा अब ये जो कंट्रोवर्शियल बिल्स हैं इन्हें मनी बिल के वे में लाके राज्यसभा से पास करने की कोशिश की गई थी सरकार द्वारा और जो कि किए भी गए थे पास तो अब वो सारे लॉज जो हैं क्वेश्चन अंडर दे आर अंडर दी जुडिशियल स्क्रूटनी और जुडिशियल रिव्यू नाउ दो ऑल दो लॉज आर बिंग रिव्यूड बाय जुडिशरी नाउ Now, collegium is a victim of its own birth pangs, says the judge. Collegium for appointment of judges. हम सभी जानते हैं कि इंडिया में C J I plus four senior most judges they appoint themselves. Okay, they decide on the matters of transfer of judges, appointment of judges, right? The observation came in the Supreme Court's judge judges separate but concurrent opinion that the office of C J I came within the ambit of R T I Act. तो इसी आरटीआई एक्ट वाली जजमेंट के साथ साथ जजेस ने यह भी कहा है कि जो सीजीआई uh, जो कॉलेजियम प्रोसेस है अपॉइंटमेंट का इट वाज अ विक्टिम ऑफ इट्स ओन बर्थ पैंग्स एंड डज इंडीड सजेस्ट द नोशन दैट जजेस आर अपॉइंटिंग जजेस तो इट इज अ क्रिटिसिज्म यू मस्ट हैव कम अक्रॉस दैट इंडिया इज द ओनली कंट्री वेयर जजेस आर अपॉइंटिंग देमसेल्व्स ऑब्जर्वेशंस मेड ट्रू सिटीजंस आर बिरेफ्ट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट हाउ देयर जजेस वर अपॉइंटेड there is a vital element of public interest in knowing about the norms which were taken into consideration for making judicial appointments it is time the substantive standards for choosing judges were formulated and placed in the public realm to promote confidence in the appointments process knowledge is a powerful instrument which secures consistency in the application of law and generates the confidence that Confidence is essential to sanctity of the process of judicial appointments. तो हमें पता ही नहीं कि जजेस कैसे अपॉइंट करे जा रहे हैं ये सरकार और जुडिशरी के बीच का मामला है सी जे आई प्लस फोर सी एम ऑफ जजेस दे सजेस्ट अ नेम टू लॉ मिनिस्ट्री लॉ मिनिस्ट्री एक्सेप्ट सी नेम और रिजेक्ट सी नेम इफ द सेम नेम इज सजेस्टेड अगेन लॉ मिनिस्ट्री इज बाउंड बाय द एडवाइज ऑफ सी जे आई सो लॉ मिनिस्ट्री विल देन सेंड द फाइल ऑफ द जज टू प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया हु देन अपॉइंट द जज there are some allegations that some of the judges are uncle judges here that means jo kaka mama chacha tau hain family ke upar agar agar aap ek lawyer ho lovely professional university se ya kisi professional university se to bhi aap judge ban sakte ho kyunki aapke uncle jo hain jaise hum bolte hain ki chacha vidhayak hain waise yahan pe agar chacha judge hain to aapka judge banna tay hai right to uncle judges treaty bench shopping bench shopping तो ये सब एलिगेशन जुडिशरी पे लगते रहते हैं तो जुडिशरी अप, अपने आप को क्लिनजिंग के लिए ये सब जजमेंट जो आ रही हैं ये एक अच्छे राष्ट्र के हमारे देश के हित में हैं दीज जजमेंट्स आर इन दी नेशनल इंटरेस्ट दैट देयर शुड बी नो टनल विद डार्कनेस लाइट ऑफ ट्रांसपेरेंसी दी टॉर्च ऑफ ट्रांसपेरेंसी इन ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी शुड लीव नो डार्क टनल सो दिस इज वट इज है सो अंडर दी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन जजेज ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट वर टू बी अपॉइंटेड बाय द प्रेजिडेंट in consultation with cji now what has become is cji is uh, suggesting a name to the president president is bound by that name except for uh, intelligence bureau report etc now the other thing is how did this happen the problem is of the executive as well in the indira gandhi era the four uh, three senior most judges they were superseded and in their place one of the junior judges was appointed as the cji so that is why because the government had interfered in the process of appointment of judges that is why cji or judiciary took this power of appointment of judges to and gave it to themselves and in recently also there are some allegations that the government is trying to interfere in the process of appointment of judges 
के एम जोसेफ इशू उत्तराखंड हाईकोर्ट सी जे आई हिज नेम वॉज रिजेक्टेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट फॉर अपॉइंटमेंट एज द सुप्रीम कोर्ट जज सो सम ऑफ द कांग्रेस पोलिटिकल पार्टी लीडर्स वॉर सींग दैट जस्ट बिकॉज ही गेव द एडवर्स जजमेंट इन द उत्तराखंड लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली प्रेजिडेंट रूल केस दैट इज वाई हिज नेम वॉज बींग रिजेक्टेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट इन टू थाउजेंड एंड एटीन नाइनटीन राइट तो दिस इज द टाइम लाइन दिस इज गिवन इन योर बुक्स एज वेल नाउ कमिंग हेयर दे सेव पीपल फ्रॉम साइक्लोन्स बट हु इज सेविंग द सुंदरबंस मैंग्रोव्स वेन द वेरी सिवियर साइक्लोन बुल बुल मेड लैंडफॉल एट सागर आईलैंड इन द सुंदरबंस अ ग्रुप ऑफ टूरिस्ट फाउंड दमसेल्स स्ट्रैंडेड नियर द कलश कलश आईलैंड इन द वॉलेंटली इंक्लीमेंट वेदर so what are mangroves mangroves are shrubs or small trees that grow in the coastal saline or brackish water so mangroves represent a characteristic littoral forest ecosystem these are mostly evergreen forests that grow in sheltered low lying coasts estuaries mud flats tidal creeks back backwaters etc mangroves occur worldwide in the tropics and subtropics mainly between latitudes 25 degree north and 25 degree south Mangroves are highly productive ecosystem. So you can read all these things about the mangroves. Okay, mangroves are like a key to the coast. They contribute up to dollar one billion per year towards the Florida's economy. They provide habitat for threatened and endangered species such as wood wood stalks and roseate spoonbills. They require high solar radiation to filter saline water through their roots. This explains. why mangroves are confined to only tropical and subtropical coastal waters mangroves are salt tolerant trees also called as halophytes so just go through these things right now coming here they contain a complex salt filtration system and complex root system to cope with the salt water immersion so this is static geography or environment and ecology since this has appeared in the newspaper now so it becomes important for you mangroves in india location mangroves are there in gujarat as well so you can expect a question in prelims that in which of the following locations or states you found the mangrove forest sundarban west bengal mahanadi then uh, mahanadi odisha right then krishna godavari mangroves then goa mangroves are there ratnagiri mangroves then kaveri deltaic mangroves and andaman and nicobar islands they also have got mangroves right so coming here gold is the third most popular investment in india the uh, yellow metal is the third most popular investment choice among the retail investors according to the latest consumer survey by world gold council gold is the third most consistently bought investment 46% of global retail investment investors yani ki aapke mere jaise jo investors hain those common investors like you and me they do not understand the uh you know people do, normally do not understand share trading ulip mutual funds etc so they know that gold is something which will not fool them right so this is there now the survey covered china india north america even north america germany and russia interestingly 67% of the respondents in india said they were considering investment in gold and they had invested in gold in the past as well <clears throat> the share of such respondents in india share share of such respondents in india was much higher than all other markets barring china where the share was pegged at 72% further 37% of the respondents in india said they were considering buying gold though they had never bought the precious metal in the past so this is just a factual news here gold scheme was brought about so gold monetization scheme you should know about this scheme uh, gold monetization scheme is now a static topic which you can read from my website as well www.jatinvarma.org so all these schemes are there minimum deposit 30 grams short term 1 to 3 years medium term 5 to 7 years and long term 12 to 15 years interest is 2.25 to 2.5% to run till maturity unless depositors withdraw them resident indians mutual funds and exchange traded funds can make the deposits then sovereign gold bond scheme this was brought about for a uh, period of 8 years exit option is there suppose if somebody has invested in the gold scheme they can exit they can withdraw the funds 
from the fifth year onwards. So there is a lock-in period of four years, four five years, right? Now minimum permissible investment limit is two grams. Interest is two point seven percent, paid semi-annually. Now to be sold through banks and post offices. Likewise, there is gold coin and bullion etc. Coming here, WHO initiative to boost insulin access. World Health Organization said it has it had begun an initiative that would cut prices and dramatically increase insulin access for diabetes. Diabetes is on the rise globally and rising faster in low income countries. Too many people who need insulin encounter financial hardship in accessing it or go without it and risk their lives. The initiative involves the evaluation of insulin developed by manufacturers to ensure their quality, safety, efficacy and affordability. So facts and figures, there are currently more than 420 million, 420 million diabetic patients, diabetic adults in the world, up from 180 million, 420 million people are diabetic. So insulin supply, medicine supply is sought to be improved. Now the number is three times more than 35 years ago. This could even increase to 629 million by 2020, 2045. So today is World Diabetes Day and in India we are celebrating Children's Day as well. So you should eat less of sweets today, right? So juxtaposing these two news articles. Now what is diabetes? Diabetes mellitus is basically in India this is like a lifestyle disease because of the sedentary lifestyle, call center jobs and non uh, physical, uh, you know, there are no uh, kheti body, there is no agriculture today. So that is why this diabetes is taking a, taking a big toll on the Indian citizens, on the Indian residents health as well. It is caused due to inadequate secretion of hormone insulin from the pancreatic gland. Insulin regulates the level of sugar in our body. Lack of insulin causes increase of sugar in our body. So everybody knows about it. So these are the numbers. 3.7 million deaths due to diabetes and high blood glucose. Then that's one person in 11. Type 1 di diabetes, there are two types. Type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Body produces insulin but can't use it well. Right. So consequences, diabetes can lead to complications in many parts of the body and increase the risk of dying prematurely. Stroke, blindness, heart attack, kidney failure, amputation etc could be there. These are the probable consequences. Right now coming here, until recently most children and adolescents with diabetes were thought to have type 1. However, type 2 diabetes mellitus DM type 2 among children is now being increasingly reported from several parts of the world. Adolescents who are obese are more likely to get type 2. If the diabetes is untreated, it leads to complications as we have seen. Now, diabetes can be managed primarily by bringing about changes in lifestyle and physical exercise and medication, meditation, right? Now, editorial disqualified yet qualified. This is on the same topic, Karnataka MLA's case. Supreme Court clarified that law on interplay between resignation and disqualification. Even while upholding the Karnataka speaker's orders disqualifying 17 defectors, this year, the Supreme Court has allowed the former legislators, MLAs to contest the December 5 by elections to 15 assembly seats. The result of the judgment now is going to be that former Janta Dal Secular and Congress, Congress MLAs, they are now free not only to contest the elections, but may reap the benefits of their immoral crossover by getting a ticket from ruling BJP. So if they would contest the uh, elections on BJP ticket, and they would emerge as winners, so they could be made ministers. Some of them could be made ministers as well. Most of them had tried to resign from their respective parties in July. So resignation as a form of defection. Don't you think that it should be recognized as a kind of defection? Now we need to amend the defection, anti-defection law to recognize resignation as a form of defection. And those of them who are resigning, they should not make it as a mockery of public office. Right. The then speaker, the suspicion not unfounded was that they would get ministerial positions as soon as BJP leader B.S. Yadurappa formed a BJP government. The then speaker K. Ramesh Kumar kept them at bay for days by refusing to act on their resignations. 
ultimately he disqualified all of them in orders passed on july 25 and 28 and said disqualification would go on till 2023 the speaker had said in his order that disqualification will be there on them they would be disqualified till 2023 the end of the current assembly's term the speaker's take was quite controversial as it appeared to create a conflict between resignation and disqualification speaker's now stands partly vindicted partially vindicted as his argument that resignation could not be a ruse to evade an impending disqualification has been accepted now resignation cannot be a shelter to uh, to be hidden from uh, the impending disqualification this argument of the speaker's order has been accepted the speaker was however also hoping to keep the defectors out of any alternative regime speaker was trying to keep them out by not letting them contest elections till 2023 as members disqualified for def defection are barred from becoming ministers until they get reelected but the court's exposition of the anti defection law relating to the interplay between resignation and dis uh, defection is quite welcome on the one hand supreme court said resignation does not take away the effect of a prior act so just because let's us suppose if some ias officer is there if he accepts the bribe if he has accepted the bribe etc after accepting the bribe if he says that i am going to resign after having been caught red handed if he says that i am resigning from the public office does it mean that disqualification will not be applicable on him disqualification will very much be applicable on him but on the other hand the supreme court's judgment says that speakers are not given a free pass to sit on resignation letters indefinitely however the supreme court did not prescribe a time within which the speaker should decide the decide on the resignation right just a second guys So there seems to be some technical error in this. Now, in the process of this judgment, the Supreme Court. Just a second. in the process of this judgment the supreme court has laid down certain principles under article 190 clause 3 a provision under which the speaker has to ascertain the voluntary and genuine nature of the resignation before accepting it the court is clear that it is a limited inquiry only to see if the letter is authentic and if the intent to quit is based on a free will the speaker is only required to verify that mlas are not resigning under any pressure so this is like a procedural check not a substantive check once it is demonstrated that a member is willing to resign out of his free will the speaker has no option but to accept the resignation this effectively ends the argument that speaker is empowered to consider the motives and circumstances whenever a resignation is submitted the verdict bemoans the fact that speakers sometimes tend not to be neutral so speaker's institution is also under question that speakers it is not necessary that speakers have to resign or they need to be politically neutral person speaker can retain his political party's membership even after becoming the even after being appointed as the speaker right identifying its weak aspects and strengthening the law may be the answer so the editorial ends with guidance that we need to identify the weak aspects of the supreme court's judgment and the strong aspects of the supreme court's judgment and accordingly we should change the anti defection law in the light of contemporary realities challenges now gloom deepens so first of all let us understand what is index of industrial production index of industrial production is something which comprises 40% of overall 40.27% of overall industrial production now these eight major industries 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 
if these eight major industries production is happening in this eight major industries then that means production would happen in for example if the production is happening in the steel sector then that means cars industry maruti hyundai toyota etc in india they would also be doing well because steel if it is being produced the steel company steel authority of india limited would produce the steel only when there is a demand from car making industry steel furniture industry or steel utensils industry right and since they are demanding that means next time we would be having the authentic data on production production of cars would have increased steel furniture would have increased and utensils would have increased right so this iip is like a pre indicator it's like a pre indicator which tells us that something is something good is going to happen in terms of growth or bad is going to come in terms of growth if crude oil production is happening if crude oil industries are growing that means that means that transport sector is going to perform well right or that means that uh, air, railway locomotives are you know working on full capacity that means something is going to bode well for transport sector airways industry etc likewise if cement industry ambuja industries ambuja cement etc they are doing well to uska matlab ye hai ki ambuja cement agar purchase kiya ja raha hai to bricks bhi purchase kari ja rahi hongi aur agar bricks purchase kari ja rahi hain to iska matlab ye hai ki sath sath daily wage laborers jo hain daily workers they are also getting employment gmr infrastructure is going to produce more houses under pradhan mantri awas yojana तो अगर ऐसे ही इन एट इंडस्ट्रीज के चलते हम ओवरऑल इंडस्ट्री में क्या सिनेरियो इंडिया में इकोनॉमी में क्या सिनेरियो चल रहा है हम ये पता लगा सकते हैं दिस इज लाइक इन ऑर्डर टू मेजर द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द बॉडी वी यूज द थर्मोमीटर वी कीप द थर्मोमीटर अंडर आर्म वी गेट द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द बॉडी सो दिस आई आई पी इज लाइक अ बैरोमीटर आई आई पी इज लाइक अ बैरोमीटर टू मेजर द टेम्परेचर और वाइब्रेंसी ऑफ ओवरऑल इकोनॉमी if iip rating is poor then quarterly gdp rating would be poor right so first of all purchasing managers index purchasing managers index tells that how much raw material is a purchasing manager in a company purchasing if there is a textile company and textile producing company let's say aditya birla group and if its purchasing manager or raw material manager is producing a lot of is purchasing a lot of cotton that means he is going to produce a lot of textile and if he is going to produce a lot of textile raw material that means iip would be poor better if iip is good then that means in the next quarter the next quarterly data of gdp gdp would also be good so this is a pre indicator 1 this is a pre indicator 2 if this is good if this means that increasing number of raw material is being produced raw material is being purchased raw material would be converted into finished goods if finished goods like parle ji biscuits etc are being produced in increasing quantity suppose this is like sugar is being produced in increasing quantity sugar will be converted into parle ji biscuits if everybody parle ji britannia gmr anybody for that matter maruti if all these companies are producing enough that means india's gdp would be showing a positive growth trend this is the article which explains that now there are some other uh, threads in this article this concertingly the article says the prolonged slump in the output of capital goods slump means decline in the output of capital goods uh, which is a proxy for investment activity suppose if i am a businessman if i am not investing money into capital goods capital goods are something which are used for manufacturing the heavy machinery if i am not purchasing the machinery for purchase of computers that means i am not confident of selling the investment but if i i, I am purchasing the machinery to produce something like computers etc led tv tft screens etc that means i am confident of selling it that means if i am purchasing the capital goods it's a sign of my business confidence if my business confidence is proper then i will you know increase investment i'm i'm leading to tatas ambani's etc they are increasing the investment if investment is going to increase 
there is going to be an increase in production and increase in production will lead to more employment more tax revenue suppose if i am into services sector if i am making investment into capital goods like i am purchasing more and more number of computers digital cameras etc i would need more that means i am making a lot of investment if i am making a lot of investment i would need people to monitor these or to work on these computers so this is the business cycle continuum so this is what this line is telling you so if there is a decline in capital goods production or purchase of capital goods if being a farmer if i am not purchasing a tractor to iska matlab ye hai ki main investment nahi kar raha agar main investment ya nivesh nahi kar raha hu to iska matlab ye hai ki mera aage koi confidence nahi hai ki main paisa kama paunga right to this uh, slump extended into ninth straight month as production contracted by about 21% for the second month in a row so the latest index of industrial production as we had seen yesterday estimates from nso shows that output shrank by 4.3% in september right so humne ye dono diagrams dekh liye consumer durables consumer durables hote hain jaise ki tv uh, air conditioners etc white goods white goods hoti hain jo goods white dikhti hain refrigerator ac tv etc they are struggling to find a demand for their wares and sliding production points to an absence of traditional festival eve restocking to so, production agar kam ho rahi hai production kam hone ka matlab ye hai ki jo restocking honi chahiye thi yani ki agar koi uh, uh, chroma retail store hai ya koi electrical store hai electronic items ka store hai wo dobara se goods nahi purchase kar raha yani ki diwali ke dauran bhi unhone kuch acha sale nahi kiya isliye unko restock karne ki goods ko खर्चेज खरीद के परचेज करके दोबारा से स्टोर में माल भरने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ रही राइट द सेकेंड सक्सेसिव श्रिंकेज इन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड कंस्ट्रक्शन गुड्स रिफ्लेक्ट दैलेंज बेसेटिंग दी टू एपोनिमस प्रिमेसी प्राइमरी सेक्टर ओके यानी कि इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर और कंस्ट्रक्शन सेक्टर गुड्स में भी अभी खरीदारी देखने को नहीं मिल रही इन्वेस्टमेंट देखने को नहीं मिल रहा लेकिन अभी जो सेंटर ने 25,000 करोड़ रुपीस का जो अल्टरनेटिव इन्वेस्टमेंट बनाने की बात कही है इससे हम ये कह सकते हैं कि स्टॉल्ड हाउसिंग प्रोजेक्ट्स जो हैं जो अधूरे प्रोजेक्ट्स हैं वो पूरे होंगे एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट के चलते कंस्ट्रक्शन सेक्टर और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सेक्टर अब इसमें इंक्रीज देखने को मिल सकता है एक्टिविटी में राइट सो दिस आर्टिकल वॉज ऑल अबाउट दिस ओनली दिस ब्रिंग्स एस टू द्लोज ऑफ दिसिस फॉर टूडे गाइज थैंक यू इफ यू आर नॉट अवेयर आई एम टेकिंग दी कोर्सेज ऑन अन अकेडमी प्लस the daily news analysis topic based course in the next 6 months through this course we are going to wind up so many uh, the important topics around 250 to 300 topics would be covered for prelims as well as mains through this course then there are other courses by me indian economy course is going to start soon indian polity and governance course current affairs round up 365 course all these courses you can access through an academy plus you have to use the code jatin verma 71 in order to get 10% discount on your an academy subscription you can go for one month subscription you can go for three months or six months or 12 months as well so all these courses are going to be there, there on an academy plus before 20th of may all these courses would be finished so if you are planning to streamline your upsc csc preparation you can go for an academy plus subscription and you can access all my courses over there so this was all guys thank you bye bye